Welcome to the Health or High Water podcast, the number one podcast on Colfax Street. <laughs> <laughs> I am your host, Brad Hutari, Ascend Performance Training, here with my great friend, Trip Parks. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Thank you guys so much for listening, watching, liking, subscribing, and please tell everyone about this. Every little bit helps. We would not be here without you all. You are the best. Uh, happy Labor Day weekend, post-Labor Day weekend. Now we are... I feel like, what, officially moving into fall? Not quite yet, maybe? Uh, the nighttime feels like it, man. Nighttime's feeling like it. A little, little bit, a little bit. How was your weekend? Good, man. Good, man. I'm ready to get I'm ready to get this week started. I know it's a short week, but we're going to hammer it out, man. Mm-hmm. We've got some cool stuff to talk about today. Yeah, for sure, definitely. we got a couple of, couple of things. We want to go into some longevity that I know you watched a documentary that we wanted to talk about on the podcast. It's fascinating. And then we wanted to go also, if there are any biz- fitness business owners, we're going to dive into a little bit of um, managing uh, fitness businesses, and uh, which will have some crossover into just people management in general. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun podcast. I'm excited, man. Let's dive into it. Yeah. So uh, you saw you saw a um, documentary. Yeah, dude, it changed my life. It was by uh, uh, Dan Butner. He is the leading expert in blue zones. And for those of you guys who don't know what blue zones are, blue zones are regions of the world where people exhibit exceptional longevity, health, and often live past 100 years. So we're, there's a ton of these little blue zones everywhere, like Okinawa, uh, Loma Linda, Nicoya, um, Sardinia in Italy. And a lot of these places have people that are living way past their means here in America. And I don't know if you guys are how I'm listening, but right now in America is the first time where our life expectancy is actually reducing. For the first time. So these blue zones are a way for us to healthily find a way out and live a longer, happier, healthier life. So, number one, why are you interested and why should somebody else be interested in this? Life is, hey, I'm just here for a short period of time. I don't want to live long. And then the second part is like, why are you interested in this? Well, it's almost like... um It's like you have a an old architect there and you're a new one. And you decide to ignore everything that he's done in the past and do it yourself. That's kind of what we're looking at here. What I mean by that is that these people, these cultures, have found a way to live a long, healthy, happy life, right? And we're just ignoring it pretty much. So we can take these things from these blue zones like mind, minerals and vitamins, um, movement and music, and bring them together and take that from those cultures and bring it into our own. So it's about us living a longer, uh, happier, healthier life based off of what these people are doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and have you just personal question? You you always been interested in this, or just like lately? Uh, it's just a passion, or so I did hear. I did I did read a few articles back when I had the protein bar about blue zones and what they were, and I thought it was really cool. But I really didn't. I know this sounds dumb, but I didn't really think about correlating them together about mm-hmm. what what we can do to influence that with our business with Ascent Performance Training mm-hmm. and how we teach these kind of things. And we we already you know have taught movement as our, one of our tenants. So, you know, we've taught that we have to be healthy outside the gym to make sure that we make it, right? And these, these after this documentary I watched, I was like, oh, my God, this is what we're doing. Yeah. I was like, this is exactly what we're doing. And, and there's people already living this, living past, you know, 100. And it's like, why are we taking stuff from these people that are, uh, you're not, not taking, but, like, you know, using these things from these people that are proven to work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what did what were the big things as they studied these? Let's go into depth on it. What were the big things that made these zones blue or uh, producing centurions? Yeah. So the, the four the four big tenets that I got from this um, documentary are music, minerals and vitamins, movement and mind. And I'll break the I'll break this break this apart, too. So the first one's music. So a lot of these cultures that are living well past their means have some kind of musical influence involved in their day-to-day lives. In Okinawa, they use a, it's like a type of banjo, right? And that's very cultural. A lot of them get around and they sing together. Um, in, uh, what is it, I- Ikaria in Greece, they all sing together, I believe. They go to church and mass and they sing. So, like, music is a huge part of their culture. You know, it's how they, they come together for a community. Mm-hmm. It's a stress reliever. Right, so music's a huge tenant. The second one's going to be vitamins and minerals. And a lot of these people are eating straight from the ground, uh, lots of vegetables, mm-hmm. lots of fruits, complex carbohydrates, lots of low saturated fats, 
they all have that in common. Some of them do have some simple carbohydrates like Greece and um, Italy, but they're produced different, right? They have different they have different methods of the way they produce this. The, even one of I think it's, it was in Italy in Sardinia, one of the ways that they actually make their their wheat comes comes up with with, with this, this this bread that actually takes sugar out of the body. The opposite of what simple carbohydrates do, hmm. right? So this is the way they process it. So the, the way that they do things with vitamins and minerals is very interesting because everything's homegrown. They do spices and minerals that are on the land, all this kind of stuff. The uh, third one's going to be movement, and you and I, we're preachers of this. So you stop moving, you start dying, right? A lot of these people, and there's a direct correlation with these people with um, pitches and elevation, like the, the how much they have to walk up and down in elevation mm-hmm. and longevity, a lot of these, there's, the, I forget which one it is. I think it's uh, Loma Linda. Uh, there is a village right below this area, and they have one of the uh, the highest. Uh, the below them has the highest, uh, is the highest blue zone in that area. But the, the little village below them actually has a terrible death rate mm. because their pitches are different. Interesting. Because of the elevation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Interesting. So they're just not walking. They're not getting their heart rate up as much. It's almost all of them, whether it's gardening in Okinawa or this, it's all low intense, low intense cardiovascular activities. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So that that was really interesting. The last one is mind. Um, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these cultures are extremely, and I mean extremely, family uh, influenced, extremely communal influenced. Like um, I forget what it's called, but there's a there is a um, select portion of uh, Okinawa that they have. I think it's called Migagi. And what it is, it's like um, a bunch of friends of the same age get together, and they meet once a week. And if someone is having financial issues or something like that, the entire group helps. Hmm. Right. So there's this there's a stress reliever off of their society of like, well, if I do get myself my house burns down or something like that, I have these people with me mm-hmm. that are here to help, with alleviates the mind as as well as religion too in that. Hmm. You know, they have ethical codes, bound, boundaries, and, and, and teachings in these in these societies that help them have good ethics growing up. Mm. So those are the four things. Music, minerals and vitamins, movement and mind. So so minerals, lots of fruits, vegetables, food, food that's grown in natural soil, good biodiverse soil. Mind is communities and relationship and, and having strong ties to your, your brothers and sisters, um, even your neighbors and family. Yep. Then music, something to do with singing or, or playing an instrument or something. And then what was the fourth movement? Movement was the last one. Yeah. Movement, the last one, meaning walking up elevation and, and wow, I love that. Well, I mean, one of them uh, was um, um, let me check my notes here. It's um, Nicoya in um, Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. They had a video of this guy who is who's still cowboying at ninety five years old. Still riding a horse, roping shit like at ninety five, riding a 95. horse. Oh my gosh! Can you imagine how sore you'd be? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, I'm so sore. Well, the the guy Dan, uh, I highly, everyone listen to this. I highly recommend you guys going to go check out that documentary on Netflix called "Living to a Hundred: The Blue Zones" uh, with Dan Butner. Um, yeah, he he goes through these things like he he comes up to this guy. He's like trying to he's right waiting for me this this centurion you know, or whatnot, and he's like, well, I'm waiting for him. The guy's like, oh, I'm. I'm I'm 95. I'm That's just me. me. <laughs> He's like, what? You're just roping a horse. He's like, yeah. I'm still I'm still doing everything. Dude, speaking of that, uh, <clears throat> I just and I know I told you this, but I had uh, for the listeners, I had uh, my mom and her two sisters did a 14er, um, and my sister and brother, and they are almost 70 or in their 60s, um, and uh, man, they did, crushed it. Um, one of the sisters didn't quite make it all the way up. Um, but she did an amazing job, pushed herself to her absolute limit, and then had to turn around. But uh, I was so proud of them to see them hike that. And, and uh, it was like a life goal, too. You know what I mean? Like a life goal. to It's a challenge. I love hiking because hiking the physical, you feel like you did something incredible physically. Like you feel like in totally invigorated, not only after you get done, but like the next day and the following day. Um, so it's, it's great, but it's also mental too, right? Like, so, you know, it, you feel like you just clear your head, like you can do a lot of stuff. Um, so I mean, hiking, but how do people do it if they're not, you know, if they don't have elevation where they're at, right? Like flatlanders, what's the, what's the, <laughs> well, look at, like, just take Okinawa, for example, you know, they're at sea level mm-hmm. and what their biggest thing is gardening. That's how they stay healthy. And listen, they're getting fresh vegetables and fruits from their yard, mm-hmm. not from a supermarket, 
they're controlled. Yeah. Right? And they're, it's this low intense. Like, you know, you, you do have to squat down. And another cool thing, too, about these people from Okinawa, a lot of them don't have furniture. These people are getting down. They're squatting oh, yeah. all the way to, to the floor. To eat? Yeah, they're sent, they sit on the floor? You know, 25, 30 times a day, they're squatting. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a super good point. Right? So they're, yeah. they're moving. And again, low intense yeah. cardiovascular activity. You know what I mean? I mean, we we, we talked about this before too about like you know like hardcore like marathon runners yeah. and those kind of things, and they're destroying their internal organs because this you know a body going twenty seven miles of swimming, biking, and running is hard on the system. Yeah, yeah sure, you sure. Know, these people are doing low intense stuff that is easy on their system, but it's 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 helping them uh, stay healthy. You know, it's crazy too as you were talking about. It's like. This is why I've never been a big cardio guy going to the gym and doing cardio, right? Like cardiovascular exercise. Like think about the society that we've set up now. We have to go somewhere in order to do cardiovascular exercise when previously we had to go, I mean, way back to hunt our food, obviously, but even to do work, to build houses and to build communities, we're physically using our body. We didn't have any overweight people or obese people. Depression was incredibly down. Uh, it almost didn't even exist in a sense because everybody had, had, had severe sadness and sorrow, but there was still that family connection. But now we, we most people are sitting down for their jobs. Uh, most people are, are their entertainments on their phone so we've we've kind of created an interesting like thing that's why i always felt like going to the gym was about building muscle right because building muscle is sort of like a status thing like once you build muscle and you're holding let's say seven pounds of extra muscle in your body like you know as well as i do how much does your bmr go up and you're burning so many more calories during the day having that extra muscle so when you're in the gym that's why i've always felt like you know hey let's put muscle on the best we can and I know your, you know, your programs with the genetics is, you know, even bringing it to a different level with the science of it, of like, hey, let's find your exact percentage. Um, so it's yeah, I don't know, man. I'm it's grateful. I'm excited to, to be sort of on this forefront of, giving people perfect programs for the. I mean, perfect in, in a air quotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we can always improve what we're doing, but 100%. to give them individualized programs is really cool. And that documentary you told me about. I was like fascinated with it because you're you're right. Longevity, man, that's the business we're in. And that's what every person that I've talked to lately has, that's all they care about is how can I live my best life into my 50s, into my 60s, into my, that's all they care about. People aren't trying to, you know. Well, you, you know what we hear a lot in, in this, especially around here is like, I just want to keep up with my grandkids. Yeah. You know, people just want to be able to live. And I think that's that's extremely sad that we're living in a society where it's almost anti that. Yeah. We're accepting uh, obesity as a disease and, and instead of, you know, I'm going to be, ch I'm going to be. Hit it. I'm going to be crucified for this. Get it. But, you know, there is a control issue in America. And there's a control issue. There's a convenience issue because we don't want to do things. But if you go through these four tenets, music, vi minerals and vitamins, movement, in mind, what's what's the common denominator in all those four? Uh, they make you better people. <laughs> I mean, they're they're <laughs> like yeah, that's, a, that's a good answer. Yeah, they like they're all like like uh, something that improves your physical and mental acuity. It's purpose. And oh, it's yeah. purpose, right? Living life for purpose is the number one way to, way to live a long, healthy life. And a purpose in your right. life, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we talk about it all the time too. It's like, yeah. man, I'm a suck. You don't have purpose in life. Like, we're, you know, you're you're just lost in the waters. Totally. You know, so having totally. a good purpose for this is huge, and that's one of the that's the common denominator in all this is mm. someone having purpose in life. I love that. And when we get rid of these th these things, like you know, we we don't wash our hand clothes by hands anymore. We don't gather our own food anymore. When we lose that aspect, this convenience aspect happens, and then ego takes over mm. and we talked a little bit about that today with especially ego and business Oof. about people not knowing what they're doing and, and 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 that does affect our longevity is relying too much on our ego yeah yeah definitely definitely ego um ego ego says how important i am how important i am to myself and then as you get rid of that, you focus more on your mission and your impact you have on the world. Yeah, so, so segue, let's just slightly segue into that, into, you know, the ego and business and what we were talking about and purpose. And, you know, for the listeners here, Tripp and I were talking about um, uh, business, other businesses, fitness businesses. And, you know, this is what set our mission into motion is we were sick 
Tell that story. What were we sick of? Just well, a hundred percent. And before that, if you guys want some backstory on this too, we have an episode number seven, I believe. Uh, it's called "Intro to the Fitness Industry." If you guys want to take a little back scoop back, uh, Brett and I do have some um, flashbacks from when we were working in corporate. It'd be a really great, uh, really great add-on for this episode once you guys are done. Um, but the reason being is uh, Brett and I both went through this this. Um, epiphany of realizing that when we're in corporate wellness that it was all about the numbers it was never about the persons i mean they were talking we, we, we had one person that was talking people as in units right so when when brett and i got together at the end of this past year in 2022 or uh new year's we were kind of talking about this and then you know we both have enough had enough experience like fuck it we'll do it ourselves we were sick uh, I was fed up. I think you were even more. Fed, I mean, I don't know. But, but oh, I, I stormed out. <sighs> we were just fed up. Fed up with this. Yeah. So we were fed up with this. Uh, so people want to grow. Want to be in the fitness industry in the fitness space, whether it be boutique or personal training or a gym or whatever it is, and they were so focused on making money from these endeavors, which, yeah, you got to feed your family, you got to pay your bills, you got to keep the lights on. I get it, but that you you pay that by way of having a service right by way of exactly. focusing on doing a great job whether it be for shoulder rehab or maybe it's a class you're organizing or maybe for you it's hey i want to incorporate genetics i know this is going to be big i know it's the future like i want to do a great job at this and then the money comes from that we we're sick of it uh just fed, totally fed up with it and uh it's still going on today you know you see business owners and 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 you know, gosh, I, nothing but love here, but just stop it, right? Like, knock it off. Like, if you if you want to grow, especially in the fitness industry, if your employees aren't the happiest people you've ever met, okay, if if you're if you're not working for them, if you as an owner, if you're not working for your employees, checking in on them personally, seeing hey, how's how's life going? Like, if you don't know what their life goals are. That's your number one problem. Don't even think about marketing. Don't think about sales. Don't think about lead gen. Don't think about any of this other stuff. If you're not focused, number one, on your customers, the people who you're serving, and your employees, your employees over your customers, because your employees take care of your customers. And again, that's longevity, right? We're yeah. talking about longevity here in blue zones. You'll never be in a blue zone if you are continually stressed out about KPIs. <sighs> lead gen, KPIs, sales, like... And that's the biggest mistake I see, uh, uh, Trip. It's like, but Brett, isn't that important? Aren't keep my key performance indicators? Aren't my number of leads that are coming in? Aren't my sales percentages and retention? Aren't my uh, employee retention? Aren't those important? Yes, but you have to remember those come by way of. The, it's like the analogy of like my car's hot, so I'm going to drive it into a lake, right? <laughs> it, it'll cool it off. Yeah. <laughs> but but was that the why it was hot in the first place? No. So you're not getting leads, not because you're not getting leads, but maybe because the people who are supposed to be creating leads for you uh, don't care about your business <laughs> because right. you don't care about them. Ex exactly. This trickle down effect and something that you and I realized really early on in this business was not just the people, but how we did marketing, right? It was about going out, handing out flyers. It wasn't about paying for anything. It was, it was about shaking hands. And, and I, you know, you know me, I've changed my perspective from the protein bar to now. Mm -hmm. I used to just like, if I didn't think you were worth the time for myself, cause I was so busy, it's like, I'm not going to do it. And now I'm like every single person is an opportunity for me to expri explain what we're doing, mm -hmm. and that perspe that perspective change has completely flipped the way that the, the way I do things. I'm less stressed. We're making more sales mm -hmm. because I, it yep. just doesn't matter. Like every single person is an opportunity for you to reach out, and a lot of business owners and longevity forget uh, about the referral. Mm -hmm. We forget about about listen. If I focus on my product. If I come out with a really good product, mm -hmm. then people just keep on coming back. Yeah. I mean, look at the toys back in the 90s and 2000s, like for Christmas. Our parents used to like wait outside like 5 o'clock in the morning to get us a toy because it was a great product that we wanted. Yep. I want that same thing to happen in the fitness industry where people are lined up around the block waiting for something that's actually going to help their frustrations. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about here, too, is like mm -hmm. these people – these these companies, especially, and again, I'm really in the fitness industry here, but get I don't it, care. Get it, dude. Get it. But but listen, <laughs> but listen, like they 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 don't care about the people, and you guys listening right now understand that. Yeah. 
you guys listening right now are the byproduct of the frustration that comes from that. Yeah, totally, 100%. Right? Mm -hmm. So you guys should be pissed. Yeah. You guys should be upset and fed up and it should want more from your fitness programs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. And even if, yeah, no, dude, honestly, like I could go on a rampage on this on this episode about how frustrated I am. It makes me sick and there's an ego in this. There's a Oh, well, why is my business not growing? Why is... They blame everybody else? Why are my employees not doing what they... Listen, this isn't just about fitness. This, it's more than fitness. It's, it's, you know, and if you think, if you're old school and you think, oh, it's, this is soft, right? Like, do your job. Like, everybody should just do their job. I had a, um, you know, somebody asked me, you know, how many leads you could generate in a day, right? Like, how many leads could you generate? Well, listen, how many flyers can you hand out in an hour? I, mean, I don't know, 50, 75, 100, do that eight hours. You can hand out 800 flyers a day, right? So times that by five days, 800 times five, that's 4,000. Wait, is that right? Eight yeah, times but five? what's your longevity yeah, going to so be then, to do What's that? the longevity game on that? Exactly. How happy is somebody going to be handing out flyers? There's an art form to the balance, and trying to explain that is like foreign. So this crosses, it's not only fitness, but this goes into people management and just understanding the psychology of building an organization. Uh, I don't care if it's a huge organization or a small organization or even a family network. Understanding these principles is is the concept of helping the people around you. I mean, I don't know how many times you've helped me, even when I'm stressed, or and, and going, hey, what can I take off your plate, right? It's not about business. It's about, hey, I see you're stressed. I see there's a lot on your plate. What, what do you need me? What do you, I'll take it off your plate. And that's where I'm like, God, okay, it's a mission. This ain't about me. This isn't about you. This is about how can we, okay, I can jump in a session of yours. Um, it's the biggest thing, man. It's, it's the biggest thing. And this is the change we see in this industry. It's the change we see in all these industries is that the companies that don't care about their employees and their customers above their profits are going to crumble in the next 10 years. It's already happening. Well, and here, here's, here's kind of my, not summary, but my idea here mm -hmm. for, for this whole thing. Mm -hmm. We should be creating blue zones in our community at home and at work. And if you, if you want to make it to 100 in your life, if you want to make a happy, healthy life, you're going to have to do these tenants. If you want to make it to 200 years with your business, mm -hmm. you're going to have to create blue zones and make sure that your employees are happy, make sure that your project is good. Because mm -hmm. if not, capitalism will eat you up. Mm -hmm. But if we create these environments and these blue zones, then we'll get past that. We'll, we'll get further. And your, your, your guys' business will get further too. It's like, you know, instead, again, taking that ego out of the business part. Listen, like, I'm gonna trust my community. I'm gonna lean on my. I'm gonna lean on my staff, and I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna trust them, and start doing. Start seeing those kind of results, and you, you'll see a totally different industry. Then you start seeing these blue zones at work, at home. Then these little blue zones turn into communities. Blue communities turn into cities, mm -hmm. right? So that's how we start this process of like we 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 gotta we gotta think about how work is. We gotta think about how we're treating our employees, how we're treating our customers, thinking about our product, and in life, we have to really be taking advantage of our uh, of. You know, if you're around family, being around family. If you like playing music, go out and play music. Mm -hmm. If you any kind of workouts you want to do, go out and work out. And then finally, just eat better, mm -hmm. right? If it doesn't come out of the ground, mm -hmm. or from or from an organic food source, then pro you probably shouldn't have it. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's all it's it's all. No, you're totally right. It's all a pu big puzzle piece, and everybody's got to play their role in the big picture. And and if you're not a boss working for your employees. And you think they're working for you and need to do as you tell them, your business is gonna fail, like hundred percent. And and a lot of people just don't realize that. I think that's the old school analytical. Yeah. But we're not we're not numbers. People are not numbers. People are people, and you can't fake it and go, oh hey, and just remember somebody's name and expect you just remembering their name for you. Actually, have to care. You can't. <laughs> can't fake it. There's no pretending to care. It's it doesn't work. So people see, people see right through it. People see through it. So if you if you're but you can start and if you're learning how to do it, go. I'm going to pretend to care, and then maybe I'll learn how one day. That's fine, totally cool. But whatever you do, find a way to care about your mission, not how many dollars are going in your bank account. Um, final words, Mr. Trip. Final words is I'm going to leave it here with purpose. Uh, guys, the the. the entirety of what Brett and I have been talking about today can all lead with purpose. If your purpose is to go out and make money, the fitness industry probably isn't for you. 
because you're, ta you're, you're talking about trying to take care of people, their health, and their life, and trying to make a profit off of that. What, what you should think is, listen, I want to help this person, and I will. Therefore, I will get compensated down the road if I do a good job. We, we have lost that in the service industry, that people in the service industry just get paid up front and do what you got to do. No, you got to prove yourself. You got to take the ego out and find purpose. As a business owner, find purpose in your business. Find a way you can help your employees. Find a way you can help your consumers. As a general manager, find purpose in your employees. Find purpose in helping build your business to help the community. As an employee, you should be doing all the above because that's what you have to do. So if there's anything out there, go find a purpose in yourself, your business, and your community, and you'll find things change a lot quicker than you think. Thank you so much for joining us for this awesome, amazing, another episode, pumping out content. Um, hopefully it's nutritious for the brain, and, and you guys uh, uh, want to hear some new stuff. Please hit us up. Let us know what you need. I want to give you a shout-out to any of the new followers that I know have joined this journey. Thank you so much, you guys. I can't tell you how grateful we am or that we are to have you on this journey with us. Uh, having these discussions is an absolute privilege. Uh, developing these genetic tests and these biomechanical assessments uh, for not only athletes and high-performance individuals, but just for people who want to increase their longevity has been such an enjoyable process between Trip and myself. We've had a blast doing it, and we our only issue now is that we have to figure out how to how to fit, <laughs> fit more hours in the day because we are at the point now where Trip Trip had to say to me, "Oh my God, Brett, is everything okay?" <laughs> I was so stressed out with the amount of work. We have but like i said we are eternally grateful <laughs> for this opportunity um, and also if you're looking for a position in the fitness industry we are hiring um, if you know somebody that's fantastic and that and that wants to get involved in this mission please send them our way we have a lot of exciting stuff and as always thank you to the the returning listeners um, every share comment like and subscribe means a lot to us and gets us one step closer to our goals. So thanks again for joining Health or High Water with myself and Mr. Trip Parks, and we'll see you on the next episode. See you guys. Make sure you guys are checking out Health Profiling on Amazon and Kindle, and then go to go to AscendPerformanceTraining.com to find some supplements. We got Calvar Labs released now with four new products, so go check it out.